Welcome ladies and gents, it's the Crazy Gamer and today we're going to talk mechanicals. And no, I don't mean cars, but keyboards. I had this great idea while I was interacting with one of you and it immediately popped into my head like... How about do the test to see if mechanical keyboards can make you less of a choke happy scrub? Nice and easy, just grab a cheap home membrane keyboard and two mechanicals, boom, a perfect test is born. So I researched that topic and somehow avoided starting a forum wide flame war, then started testing. Part 1 is to talk about what mechanical key switch is, how it works and what switches you should pick. The first thing to take note of is that mechanical key switches are totally unlike the cheaper membrane ones that you most likely have in your keyboard right now. They rely on springs and metal contacts instead of rubber domes and contact pads. They tend to operate smoother and have a more even travel. A big advantage of mechanical key switches is that they're extremely reliable and generally much more durable than a membrane key switch despite having more moving parts. They're also touted as being great for increasing your typing speed and accuracy and also reducing fatigue. This is where OS, 220 BPM streams, chokes, fails, and Cook Easy the Korean aim god telling you that your shit come into mind. There are a few companies that produce mechanical switches and some of them have different designs. Logitech is partnered with Omron and produces what they call their Roma G switch, which has redundant contacts in case one set fails. Kale makes their switches similar to Cherry's MX line with different spring values and Razer does the same type of switches, but they have an higher actuation point and different colour to denote the actuation forces. Today though, we're only going to be focusing on Cherry and their MX line as they're the most popular switch that you can find to this day, and they're very well recognised within the OS community. I mean, even the OSA keyboard has Cherry MX switches in it for crying out loud. There are many types of switch that Cherry offers in this series, and they're all denoted by the colours of their shafts. The common ones are red, green, brown, blue and black. There's another type, the clear switch, which also exists, but it's not as common. One useful thing to note about the Cherry MX switches and what makes them so great is that they don't actuate at the bottom of their keystroke. They have a 4mm stroke, but they actuate at a halfway point of 2mm. This can be less fatiguing and it allows you to get a shorter press on the keys. Another really cool thing is that they generally reset very closely to this actuation point, making short, fast and precise presses a breeze. Some switches have a minor caveat, such as the MX Blue, which have extra travel from the actuation point. The reasons for that we'll get on to later. So with that out of the way, let's get onto the switches themselves, complete with little gifts showing their inner workings. The first switch we have is the MX Red. This is a linear type switch and requires a 45g actuation force. These are a common switch for beginners and make a good gaming switch. They have a very similar feel to a membrane without the uneven and mushy feel at the end of the keystroke. These switches make a good introductory key switch for OSA players trying to get into mechanical keyboards. They don't really have a main issue to speak of, but if you're looking for the actuation point so you can tune yourself to it to use a lighter key press, that can be difficult as you don't feel when the key is actuated. This can mean it's better to bottom your keys out with every press to make absolute sure your game catches it, but this is a minor gripe and it doesn't detract from the more precise feel that these keys give you compared to a membrane. Cherry MX Black switches are similar to Red's. These, however, have a much heavier actuation force of 60 grams, which makes them good for someone trying to build extra stamina or muscle, a heavy-handed user that's used to something like a buckling spring key switch found on the IBM Model M, or someone who's trying to replace a very hard membrane keyboard. They're not generally recommended for typists or those looking for a light switch, because these key switches are very heavy compared to most other switches on the market. Although there are some exceptions. <laughs> Brown switches are similar to reds. They have a 45 gram actuation force, but unlike the red switch, these are tactile. They have a slight bump in the press to indicate when they've actuated, and it's very easy to tune your style to it if you're against bottoming out the keys completely. These switches are generally awesome for typing with, and most gamers prefer these switches because of that soft tactile bump that denotes when the key has been actuated. These are also a fantastic beginner switch, and they have that same tight reset point that the linear reds and blacks have, which makes them quite a fast switch. Cherry MX Blue switches on the other hand are considered a precision tactile switch, and they're very loud in comparison to reds or blacks. They have a small collar around the shaft, that's what she said, and the actuation point is very pronounced. These switches have a 50 to 60 gram actuation force, and like all the other switches here, have an actuation point of 2mm with a full stroke of 4. Yes, I did just say stroke, get your mind out of the gutter. When you reach this point, the key will produce a very pronounced click. However, these keys have one small caveat for those that need a fast switch in that the key needs to travel a bit further after the reset point has been reached to allow for the collar to slide passionately down the sh- Sorry about that. Anyway, all you need to know is that the key needs to travel a bit more before it actuates again. This can make double tapping difficult, so if your technique depends on it, they're not worth considering as much as a linear or soft switch. 
Definitely try this switch out though, as they're awesome for typing on. MX Greens are similar to the MX Blues, but they're a very heavy switch clocking in at a whopping 80 grams of actuation force. These are a very similar switch to the MX Blues being a precision tactile switch, and they'll be a fairly decent switch for the heavy handed typists and gamers among you. Take note though that these switches, just like the blacks, may require some getting used to but will be good for building stamina and muscle. And finally, for the Cherry MX Clears, as mentioned before, these are a harder to find switch. They're similar to the MX Browns with a small tactile bump at the actuation point, but these switches carry a heavier actuation force of 65 grams. These might be useful if you like the feel of Browns but wish that they were heavier, although finding a keyboard with these will be very difficult indeed. So, if you're on the market for a new mechanical keyboard, there are tons to choose from all featuring at least one of these key switch types. Your best bet is to do what I didn't do and buy yourself a key switch rack. These cost about $15 or £12.02 and they have all of the switches that I mentioned in this video plus some keycaps and rubber o-rings used for attenuating some of the clack in case you don't like it. There's a link in the description for where you can buy this key tester and everything else that I've mentioned in this video. I hope that these links and the information from this video will give you some ideas on what to look for in buying your next Chicago typewriter. Oh, and before I forget, if you can't afford a full mechanical keyboard, Pepe in his infinite wisdom has added a 2 key OSA keyboard to the store. If you want to buy one, the links are also in the description. It's a $30 or £24.04 excluding shipping keypad. You can bind the keys to match your current keyboard as well as play with some of the LED lighting effects and colours because it's also RGB LED backlit and has software available for customising the keypad to suit your needs. So that's enough babbling about the keyboards. Let's find out in a practical manner how they affect my playing. I have three keyboards to test and I've played the same map for all three. I have a rubber dome keyboard, my Tesoro Durandal which has Cherry MX Reds in it and my Cooler Master Master Keys Pro L with MX Browns. All three plays were recorded live for the most accurate results. And the results of that one were fairly interesting. I certainly felt some fatigue during the membrane run as you can be seen when I tried to relax my tapping hand. Additionally, it had an effect on my left hand as well which was significantly more taut than it normally is. Mainly this is due to the extra force that I used to tap on the keys to make sure that all of them actuated properly. When I used my key floating trick that I use on the mechanicals it was nowhere near as easy as it should be because the keys on a membrane keyboard aren't a linear press. They don't have that smooth reset either, so finding the reset point without the membrane springing back up to its top point is basically mission impossible. It's kind of annoying, but if it's all you have, you can easily get used to it. So, on a final note, would I recommend you buy a mechanical keyboard? The answer is absolutely yes. Especially if you like to play fast-paced rhythm games or do a lot of coding in your spare time. A mechanical keyboard is a great way to reduce strain in your hands and wrists, improve your typing speed and improve your performance in fast-paced games such as us. 
The keys reset faster than the membrane switch, which makes them much better for really fast actions, such as 220 BPM streams or fast stacks of hit circles. It takes a while for you to adapt your playing style to suit your keyboard properly, and you need to get used to the feel of the keys before you spot an appreciable difference in your performance in the game. But it does gradually show as you improve your techniques. I mean, heck, I'm still learning techniques for improving stamina, such as the aforementioned key floating, where you hold the keys down as close as you can to their actuation point to make your presses shorter, faster and more precise. It's taken me the best part of two years to get it down, and part of that is because I opted for a linear mechanical keyboard. But that's not a big issue because I still didn't have to bottom the keys out for my clicks to register, which is awesome. So, with that out of the way, that's it for this video. I got a new idea coming to the channel and this will be in the playlist for it. I'll call it Viewer Questions. If you have a question regarding hardware or gaming and want this idiot behind the mic here to ramble on about it for 10 or so minutes, then comment on any video with your question and I'll get back to it as soon as possible. If you want to see other topics that fellow subscribers and viewers have given me to cover, then look for the playlist called Your Questions Answered. Every one of these types of videos will be in that playlist. Thanks all for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider subscribing, and don't forget to turn notifications on if you haven't already so that you can get your dose of memes when it's uploaded. I'll be back with another video soon, so until then I'll catch you next time.